Hello friends, this video on communication systems part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at some of the important terminologies in communication system. It is very obvious that communication system is not going to be as simple as that, but you just have a transmitter, a receiver and a channel and that's it. You can make a communication system. There are a couple of other things as well which play a very important role in communication systems. So we will quickly have a look at some of those important things. So what are the new terms which we will come across now or what are the new things that we are going to talk about now? So we will talk about signal, noise, attenuation, amplification, range, modulation, demodulation, and bandwidth. So these are the couple of things which we are going to talk about in the next few slides because these are some of the terms which are very very closely related to a communication system. So it is very much important that each one of us understand each of them very clearly. Okay, so let us start with signal. Now in the past few slides I have often been talking about the message signal, the electrical signals. So what are signals? So let us understand the basic term first. What is a signal? So let us see what is a signal. Information converted into electrical form for transmission through channel. So we have been seeing that we are always talking about signals. We are talking about message signals. We are talking about electrical signals. So what are these? These are nothing but information in a certain form which is capable of transmission through the channel right so in our example which we considered where i was telling that you sent a letter to your friend who resides in bangalore so what was our signal there the letter itself is the signal right because what is the information which is present which is there with the source the information is the fact that he got admitted into a top college Right? So how are you actually packaging that information? You are packaging it in the form of a letter. So the letter is nothing but a signal. Right? Now the signal can have many different forms. For example, when the signal is not converted into um, the electrical form, it is known as the message signal. Right? And then the signal gets converted into electrical signals which are capable of transmission. Now these electrical signals are either in the form of voltage or current. So information can be in three different forms. It can be audio, it can be video or it can be data. But this information gets converted into electrical signals so that they are capable of transmission through the channel from transmitter to the receiver. Right? So that is a signal. Now what are the different types of signal? Broadly there are two types of signal. Analog signal and digital signal. So let us quickly see what is an analog signal and what is a digital signal. So as I mentioned before that the letter in our example was the signal. So let us quickly look at analog and digital signals. So what are they? When I talk about analog signal. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a continuous signal. What do you mean by a continuous signal? That means with passage of time the signal takes in new new values. That means the value of the signal changes with time. So the amplitude keeps varying. So the electrical these are nothing but pulses of varying amplitude. Whereas when I talk about a digital signal, they are discrete signals. Discrete in the sense they are not continuous. That means at every moment you do not find a change. Like if they are high, they are high for a certain period of time. Then suddenly they become low. Then suddenly they become high. So there is no continuity. Analog signal is denoted by a sine wave, right? So the sine wave itself talks about the continuity of these signals. So how do the sine wave looks like? Somewhat like this. So you can see as time passes, what happens? The value keeps changing with time. If this is the time, so you see that the amplitude keeps changing with time. 
but when I talk about a digital signal, they are generally denoted by a square wave, somewhere like this. Some either high or low, either high or low. So there is no continuity in case of digital signals. Analog signals are used in audio and video transmission. So mostly they are used there. So where do we see audio video transmission like radio, television? There we have the role of audio and video transmission. So analog signal plays a role there. Whereas digital signal is used in computing and digital electronics. So we have studied about the uh, gates, right, in digital electronics because we already started off with a basic knowledge on digital electronics. We talked about the different gates, not gate and gate or gate. We also saw how the output changes with different combination of the gates. Okay, so that is all about digital electronics. So their digital signals have a major role to play. So in analog signal, we can say that the information is in the form of electrical signals which are of varying amplitude. That means with time, the amplitude keeps varying. Whereas in digital signal, the information are, is in the form of binary format. That means the information is either 0 or 1. So here the information is in the form of zeros and ones or high and low, we can say. That is about the digital signal. So when I talk about analog signals, we can think of such things like radio, television, or even you can think of an analog clock. Whereas when I talk about digital signals, you can think of a computer, CD, DVDs, you can think of a digital clock. I think the best example to compare an analog signal and a digital signal would be an analog clock and a digital clock. Do you understand the difference between this clock and this clock? So here if you see, it is a continuous signal. That means continuously the time keeps on changing and you are able to see it on the clock as a whole. Whereas in the digital case, what is happening? It is nothing but there are some letters which can be using these things like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? Using these, you can form all the letters. It is just that when this portion is high, this will glow. When this portion is high, this will glow. When this is high, this will glow. This is high, this will glow. So if you want a zero, everything should be high except the middle one. If you want a three, everything should be high except these two. If you want a two, everything should be high except this and this. Right? So this is a digital, this is an example of digital signal. So you understand analog signal and digital signal. So we are not going to get into the detail of analog and digital signals for now. So we will talk about these in detail in our higher classes. So let us look at some of the applications of analog and digital signals. For example, television. So in television, we have both audio and video. We hear sound as well as we see pictures. So the sound and picture signals, they are all analog signals. When I talk about radio, again, it is an audio signal. I talk about the analog clock, it is again an audio signal. Whereas when I talk about digital clocks, computers, CDs and DVDs, they all fall under the example of digital signals. So whenever I talk of digital signals, they will only operate in binary values, high and low, zero and one. Now, there are many different coding mechanisms which are used to code these binary codes. Like how do we code the binary 0 and 1? Now, there are many mechanisms. For example, there is a BCD mechanism that is binary coded decimal. Similarly, there is another standard called ASCII, which is American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Well, for now, we will not get into the details of those methods. However, they have a specific approach. They have a specific process which they follow to get information from the binary codes. Like a combination of zeros and ones gives you a lot of information. But how that coding is done, we will not deal with that here. That is left for your higher classes. So it was just to give you some idea about what are the types of signals. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.